your house with my bag of goodies, completely incapacitating you until I was done with you. Uh, trigger warning. Can we say not family friendly content right here? Y'all, get the kids out the room, okay? Cut your volumes down, put your earbuds in. Y'all, Army Hammer and that whole situation is now coming to big screens. Well, I say big screens, because child, if you got a 75-inch TV, you can watch it on your big screen. Discovery Plus has announced they are coming out with a documentary called House of Hammer. Let's check out some of the trailer. And then we're going to discuss some things, okay? We're discussing this whole situation. I am here to talk about what happened in my relationship with Army Hammer. Not only is he an actor, he was gorgeous and tall and I was starting to fall for him. But something didn't feel right. I do want to point out multiple women have came forward with allegations against Army. We're going to discuss that more in depth here in just a second. Once the sexual nature of the DM started, it was all that he wanted to ever talk about. And then he mentions the ropes. Like, it's like the ropes were like around your neck, your wrists, your ankles, behind your back. I had bruises, I hated it. We take a break. He's a big movie star. I'm not naive enough to think that I'm the only one. I knew something about him would come up in the future because I know how careless he is. He said things like he wanted to barbecue and eat her. And then this story blew wide open. The hammer name wielded a lot of prestige and power. But beneath it all was a dark world of deceit, betrayal, and corruption. Very wealthy, privileged men got away with different bad things throughout these generations. And it's what happened to Army Hammer to a sick degree. You just don't wake up and become this abuser. There has to be a seed that's planted. My name is Casey Hammer, and I'm about to reveal the dark, twisted secrets of the Hammer family. Dun, dun, dun. Well, from that trailer, I mean, it seems like it'll be pretty juicy. No pun intended. Family friendly, family friendly, okay? We're going to get into all these specifics here in just a second. But I do want to remind everybody, these people are all grown adults, okay? And I do want to reiterate, there are people with wild fetishes out there. There are people... Who like this type of thing to each their own, okay? But if you're not, I wouldn't suggest even continuing a conversation with somebody who has clearly showed you that they are that type of person. You get what I'm saying? If you ain't into something, don't do it, okay? Abort mission. Abort mission. I don't even know why I have to explain that to grown adults because grown women should know better. And that's not me shaming anybody. That's me stating the facts. That is my opinion, my beliefs. Okay, if somebody, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Especially if somebody tells you who they are. And then you choose, you make the choice. Okay, we all have choices. You make the choice to continue. And then when stuff gets really dark, which, I mean, it was revealed from the beginning that it was dark, okay? So when you continue and it gets darker and then you're like, okay, it's a problem. They got a problem. I'm like, well, well hold up now. Hold up. We can't just be throwing the R word out there, okay? We can't just be throwing the R word out there. You cannot do that. There's a difference in uh, being held against your will and being forced, and there's a difference in you going along with it, meaning you making a choice to sleep with that person. I mean, that's just how I feel about it. Now, let's go more in depth about these allegations and claims in this documentary and the people involved. Army Hammer's sexual assault allegations and chilling family history are the pillars of a new documentary. 
Now, when all this came out, when the girl who called herself Effie came out a couple of years ago, I believe it's been a couple of years now, and she was claiming all these horrific incidences, I was covering the situation. So, I do have videos on it. You probably got to do some digging, okay, because I've since uploaded thousands of videos. Yes, thousands. So... I'll do some digging, okay? I will do the digging for you. I will try to find the videos, and I will link them in the description below if I can easily find them. If not, just know they're in there somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Discovery Plus announced on Wednesday, today, the upcoming docuseries House of Hammer, which features women who have made claims of sexual assault against the actor, as well as Hammer's aunt, discussing an alleged history of abuse within her family. Now, the aunt, Aunt Casey, has been talking for quite some time now. You can do your own research on that. Courtney, who previously detailed her experience dating Hammer from June 2020 to August 2020, well, dang, that one but two months, opened the House of Hammer trailer. In the beginning, I felt like this was all perfect. This was amazing, she said, but then things change. Now, if this all happened within a short two-month, you know, sting or whatever you want to call it, then that's very telling of somebody. Like, I at least give somebody a few months, longest being a year, to show you who they really are. But within two months... If he was able to show you who he really is, then that should have been a red flag from the jump. I'm just saying. That's just my opinion. Y'all let me know what you think in the comments below. And I quote, He pushes your boundaries a little bit at a time. You're his completely. She continued as alleged text messages with Hammer displayed. He just acted mad, she said. Julia Morrison, an artist who announced in April 2021, 2021 that she was selling text with the call me by your name actor as nfts also appeared in the trailer to discuss her alleged assault and i quote i thought he was going to kill me woman says army hammer raped her lapd investigating finally hammers hammers aunt casey appears and says the family history of abuse is deeply rooted my name is Casey Hammer, and I'm about to reveal the dark, twisted secrets of the Hammer family, she says. Now, I'm over here wondering how much Aunt Casey got paid for all this. Like, Aunt Casey, how much did you get paid to literally just throw your entire family under the bus? Ask him for a friend. And I also would love to know what the entire Hammer family thinks and how they treat Aunt Casey now. I'm assuming they are all estranged from Aunt Casey, since Aunt Casey seems to be the ringleader in this whole docu-series. And hey, we see that a lot. We see that a lot with these celebrities who get into some issues, um, i.e. the Chrisleys. Who was the whistleblower in the Chrisleys whole situation? Huh? They tried to say it wasn't Lindsay, but Lindsay Chrisley, the daughter of Todd Chrisley, was the one who started the whole public investigation we'll put it that way when she went on dr phil and claimed her her daddy tried to blackmail her with a sex tape she said that about her own daddy and then she stood on in trial and testified for her daddy just a couple of months ago saying it didn't happen so yeah we got to take these celebrities and their relatives and their claims apparently with a grain of salt I mean, that's, that's sad, but I mean, they've proven themselves over and over again to basically only say things to get clout, attention, and to be in the headlines. Hello, we are talking about them today, aren't we? House of Hammer debuts on September 2nd. USA Today reached out to representatives for Hammer for comment, and they didn't return a comment, apparently. Now, throughout their relationship, the girlfriend that was a girlfriend for two months claimed that Hammer manipulated and abused her. He kind of captivates you 
while being charming. He's grooming you for these things that are darker and heavier and consuming. When I say consuming, I mean mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, just everything. After the pair broke up, she says she entered a 30-day partial hospitalization program geared toward PTSD and trauma. Later that month, another woman, Paige Lorenz, spoke to Page Six with her own allegations. The outlet says she and Hammer dated for four months last year and that Lorenz is seeking therapy as she processes the psychological effects of their relationship. And I quote, there were red flags throughout the relationship, she said. I guess I just put them on the side and he made me feel so confident at times. In March, another woman came forward, accompanied by her lawyer, Gloria Allred, to accuse the movie star of raping and beating her over four hours in L.A. In April of 2017, Los Angeles police said they were investigating the allegation. And I quote, he abused me mentally, emotionally, and sexually. The 24-year-old woman named Effie said weeping as she appeared at a Zoom, preference, Zoom press conference with all red. During the alleged attack, Effie said Hammer repeatedly slammed my head against the wall, bruising my face. He also committed other acts of violence against me to which I did not consent. Hammer, who strongly denied all accounts of his alleged crimes and unconventional sexual practices, responded through his lawyer, Andrew Brettler, who issued a statement from USA to USA Today at the time, saying Effie sent Hammer texts that refute her outrageous allegations against him. Get this, plot twist. As recently as July 18, 2020, Effie sent graphic texts to Mr. Hammer telling him what she wanted him to do to her. Brettler's statement said Mr. Hammer responded, making it clear that he did not want to maintain that type of relationship with her. And that's when she came forward saying that he'd done all these things to her. Now look, I spoke openly about this and publicly, okay? Like I'm a public figure over here. I stated when this all was going down that this Effie girl was clearly seeking some sort of attention, notoriety, something. She was seeking something, some kind of clout because she was, it was too much. It was way too much. Like, the girl was unhinged. She was posting that he was doing all these things to her while she was posting that she was a dominatrix and you know, stuff that was contradiction, contradicting the things that she was trying to put out there and make everybody believe. She was like, oh, he is this horrible person that, you know, done these horrible acts, of, you know, talking about cannibalism and all this other type of stuff. Well, look, the stuff she was posting mm -hmm, was kind of dark itself. And that was just her posting her own stuff, like of herself. Of her own sexual fetishes and preferences. She was posting them. I was following her then. I remember this. I remember this very I remember. No, it's. <laughs> Look, I got the damn lyrics wrong. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see clearly, okay? I can see clearly through the BS. Oh. I guess it's because I've been doing this for long enough that I know how to spot out the hypocrisies, contradictions, and just flat out bogus accusations. I know how to spot a clout chaser from 27,000 miles away. I promise you that. And Effie absolutely came off from the get-go as a clout chaser to me. To me. And I got attacked back then when I said... Because I said back then when Effie was posting all this, I said, well, well, why are you posting all of your crazy sexual preferences and fetishes and throwing this man under the bus and damning him for his? You have the exact same sick fetishes. You got the, the exact same sick mind that you're calling sick because you're labeling him this abuser. You are sitting here. Like, it was a lot, y'all. It was a lot. Talk about Lifetime Movie Child. 
Let me tell you, so the lifetime I got nothing on that, I just had to come inside because the sun came out and I started pouring sweat just like that. That's real, okay? That's real. Low budget production over here. But anyway, look y'all, for real. The Epi girl, she would post these things of like her tied up. She would tie herself up. She would do things like the stuff that she is accusing him of and, you know, saying it's so bad and all this. She would do these things. She was into that stuff. So the fact that she kind of started all this little thing that he, I kind of felt away about it from the jump. Because I was like, how are you going to be the ringleader and the whistleblower, quote unquote? Now, I know I said the aunt was, but the aunt got behind her on this. Now, I think Effie and the aunt are in cahoots together, clearly. I mean, clearly. But I don't know, like, how far we can trust Effie. You get what I'm saying? I don't trust Effie at all. At all. I believe Effie is just some random person who is seeking attention, notoriety, clout, um, some kind of fame, recognition. She is seeking followers. She is seeking money. She's seeking fame. I mean, y'all believe it or not, but there are actual people out there who will do and say and risk whatever for fame. They're really, I mean, fame is addicting to a lot of people. It's an addiction. Okay, a lot of people are sick with the addiction of fame. They really are. Y'all, OMG, I just remembered because I told y'all, I followed this Effie girl and she was posting under House of Effie. Okay, she started gaining a major massive following really quick because she was talking about a lot. And through her talking a lot, she's contradicting her claims in this documentary. Now, in the claims in the documentary, Effie is the one who alleged that he raped her. Well, now she was posting... That it was consensual. And she wanted to know who said that it wasn't because she never said that. See, <laughs> when you post things on the internet, receipts are real, okay? We can go back uh, 10 years ago and pull up what you said 10 years ago to contradict what you're saying today. The lies you tell. The lies. And this girl, in my opinion was doing nothing but lying like the rug in your floor so she could get some attention, some clicks and views. Do y'all remember, because I know some of y'all was following her because she had hundreds of thousands and millions of followers real quick, fast, and in a hurry. Now, y'all remember how she was talking about how she enjoyed the handcuffs, she enjoyed being tied down, and she couldn't wait to see him in court because she felt kind of erotic about it. It kind of turned her on because all the, the talk about R-A-P-E and that, that type of stuff turns her on. She used to talk about that disgusting stuff. That's why I said this girl was sick too. And when I say sick, that is my personal opinion, okay? Like I keep saying, to each their own, you are allowed to have whatever fetish you want, okay? But me and my opinion, okay? And y'all know I got them. Some of this stuff these folks are into is just nasty. And it's just sick. And the stuff she would, you know, talk about uh, was sick. So I don't know what she's doing up in this documentary. Yes, I know. Some fame and some attention. Look what the posting got her. A documentary. Wow. Wow. Meanwhile, the last we heard of Army was he was selling timeshares up, up in another country on some islands somewhere selling timeshares. That's the last we heard about that. Let me know if y'all have Discovery Plus, <laughs> because I don't. But I'm going to be bootleg watching this show. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I'm going to be bootleg watching, okay? I'm not going to tell you how, because I'm not about, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm not about to get in trouble for telling y'all how to bootleg things, or how to watch bootleg and stuff. But there's ways, okay? I ain't got to pay, I ain't got the money to pay for this Discovery Plus. I already go broke every month paying for DISH. Just so I can have the regular Discovery, the E! News, E! Network, TLC, Bravo, uh, the regular Discovery, the History Channel. I pay an arm and a leg to dish just so I can have those regular channels. I be damn. I can't afford to pay no damn streaming site. <laughs> That's just me. That's why I watch the bootleg stuff, okay? Because there are accounts and channels out there who... 
upload bootleg versions of these shows, documentaries, and movies. So that's what I'll be watching, okay? So hit me up if you plan on uploading it and let me know because I'm going to be watching. <laughs> I'm being real, y'all. Y'all know I'm being real. And also, if you followed House of Effie back then, child, girl, hit me up in the comments. Let me know in the comments below if you followed House of Effie and you remember the sick and twisted stuff she used to post. And then try to throw this man under the bus. Girl, you was the same way. How you? Mm -mm. Y'all, uh-uh, I cannot. I'm going to leave y'all with this nugget. This was a post. Because she made millions of posts, okay, House of Effie. This was a post made a few years ago while she was claiming he was doing all this. Somebody said, why do you think people still refuse to believe you after all the evidence you've provided? She said, well, that's a very small percentage of people, the hardcore rapist defenders or deniers who are dedicating their lives to hating and obsessing over me 24-7, which, by the way... Makes them slaves to me, lol. And she went on. That's how she would talk. That's how her mind went. She thought this stuff was funny when she was posting it. And she would talk about how different types of court talks turned her on. It's weird. Talking about how she would, if she went to court and got to see him, that would turn her on. Like, what the F? That's what I said was sick. I <laughs> mean, for real. In closing, I will say this. These folks need Jesus, okay? These folks need a lot of Jesus. And I hope and pray they find Jesus. While they searching for ropes and all these other things, I hope y'all locate Jesus because you need it. You need God's word and you need God's love in your heart. So you wouldn't be doing, like, it's just, it's disturbing. And I'm over here like, did this girl just do all of this for some fame? I believe it, one billion percent. I believe it. I believe, see, when she got with him, she was thinking, oh, I'm going to get some fame. I'm going to get some fame. And me and him's both into this crazy, erotic, weird stuff. So, yeah, let's let's get famous together. Let's, you know, Bonnie and Clyde this, blah, blah, blah. Well, that didn't work out for her. And then she tried to message him afterwards and tell him, like, like she wanted him to come tie her up and, you know, things like that. She was being very graphic, and he done turned her down, child. He was like... I'm sorry. I do not want that type of relationship with you. I cannot keep doing that with you. Blah, blah, blah. And then she started posting all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, he was the bad guy. I'm like, girl, he turned you down. Then you really sound like a scorned lover. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's that tea. I hope y'all enjoyed the tea for the day. Y'all smash that subscribe button. Click that bell to all. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload. Let me know if you are going to be watching this documentary. Because I am and we are going to talk about it, okay? Okay. I love y'all for watching and I will see y'all in my next video.